Hi, I'm Christopher Beeley, and the director of the Anglican Episcopal House of Studies at Duke Divinity School. I pray that this finds you and yours well and safe during this time of quarantine and social distancing. I bring you greetings from my colleagues and all the students at Duke Divinity School. We missed seeing so many of you here today on what would have been our annual study day event. Instead, I hope that you'll enjoy this small sampler of our program by Dr. Ellen Davis and musician Charles Petty. May God be with you when we pray that you remain safe and blessings to you as we approach Holy Week and the Easter celebration. God be with you. Hello, I'm Ellen Davis, professor of Bible and practical theology at Duke Divinity School. A month ago, as we looked toward the AEHS clergy day, then scheduled for March 30th, I imagined us gathering in Goodson Chapel to address the issue of climate change, a crisis that has been long in the making. Today, we are unable to gather, and yet we are united in our concern for the even more immediate crisis of COVID-19, which might at first appear to be unrelated to climate change. There is in fact a relationship, but the specifics of that is a topic for another day. Today, I simply wish to affirm that the integrity of the created order touches every aspect of our lives and our biosphere. Observing and honoring that integrity is a fitting focus for us this Lent, and indeed, a focus of our attention for the rest of our lives and from generation to generation in the church. Charles Petty and I hope that you will join us in September for a day of study and prayer and music. But for now, we want to share with you a few reflections, verbal and musical reflections, on three psalms that may in different ways speak to our moment. They give us different angles of vision on the marvelous whole that the biblical writers sometimes call the work of God's hands. And these psalms also speak honestly about the ways that humans disrupt the integrity of the whole created order. The first psalm we have chosen is Psalm 65, familiar to many of us because it is often appointed as a reading for Thanksgiving. It is a striking picture of God First, as the creator of the whole world, he sets down the mountains in his power, followed by a portrait of God, the skilled farmer, the careful agriculturalist who tends the fragile landscape of the Judean hill country, watering the earth, settling the soil on the slopes, setting the seed in the grain heads, blessing its growth. Finally, after all that, the psalm closes with a picture of pastures dressed in flocks, valleys wrapped in grain like a lovely cloak, and all the non-human inhabitants of that flourishing landscape are shouting out, singing with joy, it is a fantasia scene, but what we should not miss is that in this version of fantasia, no human voice is heard. The psalm seems to suggest that we humans are not ready to participate in the jubilation of creation. Our acts of wrongdoing are overwhelming me, the psalmist says. Maybe that explains the strange opening words of the psalm. For you, silence is praise, O God. 
for you, silence is praise. I wonder if our new practice of social distancing might help us learn what it means to honor God with silence. And in that silence, to reflect honestly on our place in the created order and our acts of wrongdoing against it. Let's hear Charles Petty's version of Psalm 65. psalm we have chosen, Psalm 85, is a plea that God will turn back from raging at human sin. As the psalmist puts it, break through your frustration with us, God, and grant us your salvation. There is no accusation against God, no attempt to defend ourselves against the charge of wrongdoing, but simply an abject plea that God will reach out and restore covenant relationship 
so that God's people may not turn back to stupidity, as the psalmist bluntly says. That is certainly a prayer for our time. And then, in the last part of the psalm, there emerges a kind of mystical vision, a picture of heaven and earth entering into full covenant partnership. Listen. Covenant living and truth come together. Righteousness and shalom kiss. Truth springs up from the earth and righteousness peers down from heaven. Indeed, the Lord will give what is good and our land will give its yield. Now you cannot translate those poetic lines into ordinary prose, and I'm not going to try. It is better just to let them play on your imagination. But I'll make one translational observation. The Hebrew word I'm translating righteousness, staka, appears three times in the psalm. Staka does not denote good deeds. Rather, righteousness in this context is a state of healthy relationship between the creator and the creatures or relationship among the creatures. One biblical scholar makes the intriguing suggestion that in the 21st century, we might well translate staka righteousness, with the English word sustainability. So try this. Covenant living and truth come together. Sustainability and shalom, that comprehensive state of well-being, sustainability and shalom, kiss. If by the grace of God, we could somehow live into that amatory vision of cosmic kissing, that lovesick vision for our world, then our land, our earth, would give its yield. Surely, the psalmist would tell us, we need to expand the scope of our love. Let's listen to Charles Petty. Oh, Lord, you once smiled on your land, turned round the fortunes of Israel. Gave the crimes of your people, covered all of our sins, turn to us, O oh Lord. Now and be patient, or will you be angry with us forevermore? Will you not turn, give us life? Once again, oh, show us your love, grand salvation. Let me listen and hear the Lord's message. Voice that speaks peace, that we not sin again. Rescue is near to those who fear Him. Glory will dwell in our land, and love and truth harmonize. Peace and Justice, kiss. Faithfulness springs.
rise up from the earth Righteousness looks down from the sky psalm to share with you is Psalm 82. On rare occasions, the biblical writers draw back the curtain between heaven and earth and invite us to glimpse what is going on in the divine council chamber. And here we see God rendering judgment on all the petty powers that purport to run the cosmos. We might well include ourselves in their number because Psalm 82 imagines all the junior members of the divine assembly being demoted to mortal status. Just like any human, you won't die, God tells them. And why? because they failed to use their power for the sake of the poor, the needy, the vulnerable. I am not going to say much about this psalm now, but I am inspired and challenged by Charles Petty's rendering of it, which I had not heard until yesterday. I am hoping that when we meet in person in September, I will be able to respond to Psalm 82 and to Charles Petty's rendering in the form of a sermon. I hope also that you can be with us on that day. For now then, let's listen together to Charles Petty on Psalm 82.
have no conscience. They go their way in blindness. The foundations of the earth are shaken from their cruel arrogance. Oh, yes, they think their God's all right, but they shall fall like any human. Rise up, God, and judge the earth. All the nations belong to you. Jesus.